For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm grateful for the everlasting life that we can have through Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. He loves you. You know that God loves you so much that He allowed His Son Jesus to go to the cross and die, that you could be forgiven, that every one of us could be forgiven, for all that will come unto Him can be saved. We choose to confess and repent of our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Has your heart been cleansed as Jesus sets you free? I'm so glad today that God is not a respecter of persons, but that He has made equal opportunity for every one of us to know Him. We can know Him. We can know that our sins are forgiven. We can know that we are free indeed in Jesus Christ. He can bring us glorious freedom. <clears throat> Listen to the words of this song. Once I was bound by sin's yelling fetters, chained like a slave, I struggled in vain. But I received the glorious freedom when Jesus broke my fetters in twain. Glorious freedom, wonderful freedom, no more in chains of sin I repine. Jesus the glorious emancipator, now and forever, he shall be mine. Freedom from all the carnal affections, freedom from envy, hatred, and strife, freedom from vain and worldly ambitions, freedom from all that saddened my life. Glorious freedom, wonderful freedom, no more in chains of sin I repine. Jesus the glorious emancipator, now and forever he shall be mine. Freedom from pride and all sinful follies, freedom from love and glitter of gold, freedom from evil, temper and anger, glorious freedom, rapture untold, glorious freedom, wonderful freedom, no more in chains of sin I repine. Jesus the glorious emancipator, now and forever he shall be mine. Freedom from fear with all of its torments, freedom from care with all of its pain, freedom in Christ my Blessed Redeemer, He who has rent my fetters and twain. Glorious freedom, wonderful freedom, No more in chains of sin I repine. Jesus the glorious emancipator, Now and forever, he shall be mine. I'm grateful for the freedom that Jesus can give a soul. I was lost. I was lost in sin, drugs, alcohol. My life was a wreck. And Jesus Christ totally transformed my life. That was a long time ago, all the way back in 1991, uh, 1999 actually. And uh, I'm so grateful, so grateful for the freedom that he has brought, that the bondage has passed, uh, that in bondage I live no more, that the freedom that I can have in Jesus Christ and I'm so grateful for that freedom that He can bring us. And uh, He loves you. 
God loves you so much. He's made a way that, that forgiveness is available to every one of us. Every one of us can be forgiven. Now, there is a, a place to pay for that freedom, and that place is giving your life over to God. That you're willing to confess and repent of your sins and turn from that which is wrong and turn to that which is right. You know, Jesus is able to forgive every one of us that we can be free. Have you been set free? Has God set you free from the bondage of sin? If not, I want to encourage you to let you know that He is able to help you to truly be free. Now, this freedom that I'm talking about, you know, if you think of uh, somebody who's behind prison bars, they're not free. And if somebody who was behind prison bars started jumping up and down and got all excited and said, Oh, I'm free, I'm free, but yet he's still incarcerated. He's still uh, in that prison cell. Is he free? Absolutely not. Well, many there are that would say, Oh, yeah, I love God and I, I, I'm a Christian and, yeah, I'm, I, I, everything's good, I'm on my way to heaven. But if you're still in sin, that's like the prison. If you're still struggling with sin, that's the prison. And so if you're still struggling and in the bondage of sin, you're in the prison of sin. And you're not really free. And so there's a lot of deception that goes around where people think, oh yeah, I'm free, you know, I know Jesus, I go to church. Well, all those things are great to go to church. And if we truly know Jesus, we may know who He is, but there, are we in a right relationship with Him? It's not knowing Jesus, knowing who He is that saves us, but it's the fact that we've come, we've confessed, and we've repented of our sins. And that's the big one that's missing in a lot of circles today that go by the title of Christian is the repentance. Whatever happened to repentance in America? You know, many are aware that, yeah, I need to confess my sins, and I meet a lot of people say, well, I confess my sins every night before I go to bed. It's like, well, when are you going to get victory over them? You see, God's able to give us victory. He's able to set us free. He's able to help us to be, break that bondage of sin that we're no longer in sin anymore. A, a, a profession of salvation that leaves sin still in command in one's life is not real salvation, it's deception. And the enemy loves for people to be deceived. The devil loves when people are deceived. He don't care how religious they are. He just doesn't want you to have real clear freedom. As long as you're still dabbling in his, uh, and giving in to his temptations, he's satisfied with letting you be religious. And many people have religion, but they don't have salvation. There's a little song that actually goes along with that theme. Um, there's a difference between religion and salvation. And I don't have the words of that song with me today. I'd gladly sing it for you. But it goes along the line that, uh, you know, there's a difference between religion and salvation. You know, religion can be based on hate or love, but true salvation transforms lives. And that's what Jesus Christ can do for us. I'm reading to you right now out of the book of 1 John to help you understand scripturally where I'm coming from on this. And anybody who preaches anything, if, if it's not coming from the Word, it, it's a false, it's, it's false teaching. God's Word has got to be the central location of where the truth is coming from. Anything that doesn't, if it's not coming from God's Word and it's man's words being spoken or man's word being written, but it doesn't match up with the Word of God, the principles in the Word of God, it's false. It's a fake religion. It's, it's fake Christianity. And Jesus Christ, He's real. He is so real. He died on the cross. He gave His life that every single one of us could be forgiven, that every single man, woman, and child upon the face of the earth could know Him and could know their sins were forgiven. Jesus Christ can do that for us. And when we, we, we confess our sins out to God and we cry out to God and we, and we admit that hey, we failed God, we've fallen short of the glory of God, and every one of us has fallen short of the glory of God at least one place in our life and more than likely just tons of places in our lives. We've all failed God. But if we get right with God, He can help us to walk the straight and narrow. He can help us to walk in a right relationship with Him. Amen? He's able to set us free. Praise the Lord. And that's the good news of the Gospel, that He's able to set us free. Glory to God. Now listen to some of this, this scripture here found in 1 John chapter number 3. 1 John chapter number 3. And this, this whole chapter just uh, verifies exactly this principle that I'm trying to teach here today, is that we can be free from the bondage of sin, and that if we're still in the bondage of sin, that we're not in a right relationship with God. And I'm not here to try to tear down anybody's real Christianity, but really, if somebody's deceived and they're, they're following it in a, a fake religion, then yeah, I do want to be faithful to speak the truth. I do want to be faithful to help that individual to see the truth and, uh, based on God's Word. But this is 1 John chapter 3. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. 
Therefore the world knoweth, him, uh, knoweth us not, because it knew not him. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifying for himself, even as he is pure. So right here it starts talking about uh, the, the purifying of self. It talk, and so you can't be pure and be in sin at the same time. The, the, the two things don't mix together. And that's one of the problems that's going on in society today and with religion today is that so much of religion today is just filled with practices of doing certain types of things and, and showing up on certain days of the week. But really the rest of the week when they're outside that little fellowship gathering, they live like devils. And it's time that we get back to the truth and that, that those that are true followers of Jesus Christ are going to want to live pure. They're going to want to live holy. And as they walk in the Spirit and the Holy Spirit living within them, they can do that. God is able to help us to live pure and holy right here in this very world that we live in. I'll continue on reading right here. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Now listen closely to this. This, this, uh, this just totally pulls the, 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 it just totally pulls back the cover on fake Christianity and living in sin, that you can live in sin and be right with God. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for, the law for, the sin, for sin is the transgression of the law. Verse 5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Verse 6, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever abiding in Jesus Christ, if you're truly abiding in him, you're not going to be living in sin. You're going to be freed from sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And he that committed sin is of the devil. I'm reading straight from God's word. 1 John chapter 3, verse number 9. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The very purpose that the Son of God was manifested and came to earth to bring us salvation is to undo the, the work of the enemy, to undo the sins in man's life, and to give us the freedom that can only come through Jesus Christ. And if we will confess our sins and repent of our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, and He's willing to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I say glory to God. We don't have to live in unrighteousness any longer. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ can set the sinner free. I'm thankful today for His liberty and for how He can set us free. We read on in verse number 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for a seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. So if we're really born of God, now how many people have heard about somebody being born again? And uh, you know we've had presidents that have professed to be born again, and then they're caught in immoral activity. The Bible talks about the fact that if we're born of God, we're not going to continue in the ways of sin. It doesn't mean that it's impossible for us to ever sin again, but it does mean that we don't continue in the bondage of sin. Jesus Christ saves us from our sins. So many will say, yes, I got saved at such and such a day, on such and such a place, and I say, hallelujah, praise to God. But what I want to know today is, are you still saved? Have you gone back to sin? Because it's possible to backslide. Somebody can get right with God, live for God for a good number of years or months or weeks, whatever it might be, and then somewhere along the line, they get themselves drawn back into a temptation, they, get, they give into that temptation, and then they begin to live in sin again. They're in bondage. It's, it's a different thing that, that if somewhere along the line you failed God, you sinned again, when you get that right, you give it up and you keep on walking with God. That's the Christian life. We don't have to live in sin where God to need any longer. And this world that we live in is so filled with the false gospel. When the enemy couldn't stop uh, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ from spreading around, he decided to take it on a different course. And I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll get these ministers to teach things like, the once saved, always saved. That, hey, you can get saved and live and, and however you want because you're covered by the blood of Jesus. My friends, that's not according to God's Word. That's the opposite of God's Word. And that's the way the devil works in our lives. 
Now you're, st I'm standing here before you. I, I, I'm not a nice person, man. I, I came from a very rough, wicked background. I was an alcoholic. I was a drug addict. I was a drug dealer. I spent time in prison for dealing drugs to an undercover police officer. My life was a mess. But Jesus Christ saved me from all that, and I've been I've been free from it since 1999. Glory be to God. He saved me. He changed me. He transformed me. And I'm, God's not a respecter of persons. What He's done for me, He can do for anyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God can set us free. Hallelujah. He's able to transform our lives. Now my question for you is, are you free? Are you free today? I'm grateful that in America we, we have freedom. And when I think about being free, I'm grateful that we still have freedoms in America. Some of them are being chiseled away at. Some of them are being chiseled away at. But I'm grateful that we have freedom. But what about freedom of the soul? You see, if you're in bondage to sin, you are not free. You're, you may be free on earth as far as walking around. You're not being told what to do by a communist party or something along that line. But that type of freedom will not get you to heaven. If you're going to make it to be with God in heaven, you've got to be set free from your sins. You've got to have that bondage broken. Now, I'd like to know today if there's anybody here, you say, you know, preacher, what you're talking about really hits my heart and I know that I'm not free from my sin. Well, I've got good news from you. You can get free right now. You can get free this very day. You can get free right here in this park, right now. It's not something that's going to go, I'm going to need to study more to get there. Now, all the study under the, under the sun will never set you free. The only way that you're ever going to get free from the bondage of sin and be transformed is to be transformed by the power of God. It's an instantaneous work of grace when you finally are willing to turn your back on sin and you put your full faith in Jesus Christ. You try to do it on your own, you're going to fail. I remember when I was trying to come to God. I was trying to get right with God. I, I mean, I was bold. It's like, man, I'm, I'm done with these cigarettes and I crumple the pack up and throw it away. I'm done drinking. But you know what? The next day I went back to it again. Over and over and over again. I do that kind of stuff. But when I, when I really got through in prayer, Jesus Christ made a change in my life. And you know, the desire to drink was gone. 100% gone. The desire to smoke cigarettes. God delivered me from that, praise the Lord. The desire to, to smoke another joint, it was gone. The desire to do any kind of a drug, it was gone. Why? Because He delivers. He sets us free, and He can set you free. And if you're in the bondage of sin today, the good news I have for you is Jesus Christ specializes in those who are in bondage because He came to break the bondage. He came to set us free. Are you tired of sin? Are you so tired of the way that you've been living? I want to let you know Jesus Christ is able to set you free this very day. Hallelujah. If there's anybody here that you know that you're in the bondage of sin, I'd like to pray with you. I'd like to, to and, and my prayers in and of themselves, but I can help to guide you and maybe direct you and answer some questions that you have. But the basic gospel is really simple. On our part, we need to confess and admit that we're a sinner. Call, call out to God, admit that we're a sinner. Confess out all the sins that it brings to our mind, just admit them. And then secondly, we need to be willing to repent of those. Repentance is being so sorry for what we've done that we're willing to give it up forever with God's help. We can't do that on our own. We can't fully repent on our own, but if we are willing to turn from it, when Christ makes the transformation in our hearts, we can now have the power to walk with Him. And we need to put our faith solely in, the G in Jesus Christ for salvation. Because we can confess all of our sins, and we can be willing to turn from sin. In fact, we can turn from all of our sins, if we were possible. If we were to turn from all of our sins and we confessed all of our sins, out, but we did not put our faith in the Son of God and the work that He did on Calvary, all of that's in vain. We're not going to be saved. You could live like a saint and never sin again for the rest of your life and still go to hell. Why? Because you didn't put your faith in Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. And it's His sacrifice on the cross. It's because He suffered on the cross that we can be forgiven. He took on Himself our sins. He took on Himself our infirmities. The things that we have done wrong, He has paid the penalty for, and we can be set free. Glory to God. Have you been set free yet? Jesus Christ is able to set you free. He's able to deliver you from all of your sins. Amen. Is there anybody here who'd like to pray? We're not going to be here very long. There's some places we've got to be.
Anybody here would like to pray, would like to talk with you? All right. Let's see one of anybody else. All right, I'm just going to have a general word of prayer, then I'm going to meet with this, this gentleman over here. And uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you that we're able to come here and to be with you today. And we ask, Lord, that you would just guide and direct us, Lord. We, we do not have any uh, words of wonder of our own, Lord, but we need your blessed Holy Spirit to guide in any conversations that we might have. We pray, Lord, that you would pour out your Spirit upon us and upon the seekers today, O oh God. And we will give you praise and glory for what you do in Jesus Christ, holy and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Well, my question is to you is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Christian. You got freedom from your sins? Here and there. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm being truthful. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Truthful. I backslide, and then I get saved again, then I backslide, and I get saved again. God wants to bring you uh -huh. stability. He wants to bring you constant. Okay. What, what happens if you die while you're out? You want yeah, to make sure you get in yeah, and stay I'm going I'm I'm yeah. to go to the gates. You know what I mean? I don't want to be lost. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you die um, while you're out in sin, though, you'll be lost. I know. I know that. Yeah. You can play with me, too. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, let's do that right now. What's yep. your name again? Barry. Barry. Mine's Rodney. Okay, Rodney. So, you, you just need to confess your sins. And repentance means that you're willing to turn from it. When you talk about getting saved and get back to God, you know what it means to confess. Well, repentance means that you're willing to turn from your sins. That you're willing to turn from them and give them up forever. You see, without that, when you talk about going back and getting up, going back and getting up, then there's something's wrong with the repentance area. This over the, this over the years, it's not like Okay, so it's not like a, a daily thing. Yeah, yeah, no, not a, no not a daily days. thing. Okay. I'm a good person, you know what I'm okay. saying? It's not a daily thing. Yeah. It's like sometimes, it's like a couple of years, you know what I'm saying? Like the road, you know what I mean? Yeah. I fall out of church, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't gotta be saved. Well, let's church. pray about your stability then. Where are you okay. at right now? You right now, right now, right now, I'm, 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 I'm in the middle of that way. You know what I mean? So you're not, you're just thinking you can get straight now. Yeah, right. What's up? Well, let's pray about that right now. Yeah. Right, why don't you just tell me I don't need to hear it. Right. If you confess it out to God and ask Him to forgive you and, and ask Him to help you to truly repent. God has me over here every day. Barry, Barry. Heavenly Father, we, we pray for Barry, dear God. I pray that you would bless him and help him and anoint him, dear Jesus, that he would seek you. That he would confess his sins out to you. Just confess them out to us, dear God. Baby. Come down and admit, admit those sins. Ask him to help you to repent. Are you willing to return from all those sins? Yes, I am. Down. I say, Lord, I want to turn from all my sins. I ask you to forgive me. And I put my faith in you right now, Jesus, that you would uh, save me. Deliver me from all my sins. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Bless you, baby. So, what's your name? Eric. Eric. All right, Eric. So you, you uh, made a motion you wanted to pray. Uh, yeah. You know, let's pray about it. You know, where are you at with God? What, what's your you know, situation? the past three days with all the ups and downs, I, it's, you know, the people I keep meeting that are helping me, I, it's got to be worth something, for something. I mean, that gentleman there, uh, just waiting here, not leaving, staying, to, you know, for something like this. It just keeps kind of falling in place here, it seems. Yeah. yeah. So, so you ever got to the place where you knew your sins were forgiven? Uh, he did that yesterday for me, actually. Okay. Who, who, who and I very that? much agree Larry. I uh, was going guy? route witnessing, yeah. Oh, okay. But, uh, which one's Larry? He's the very tall gentleman there. Okay. <laughs> very spiritual. Like I said, very, I've never met the guy before. He gave me a ride all the way to Sweet Valley. Awesome. He got lost five times. Sounds like you got a good friend. I don't yeah. even know him, honestly, yeah. but he's the best friend So I've you got clear with God yesterday? Yes, sir. Praise I'm the just Lord. trying to stay that way. All right. Well, that's important. Let's pray about that. Let's sure. pray God will just help you. And, you know, as far as staying right with God, we just need, need to be in this. Do you have a Bible? I do. I brought my Bible with me from jail. Awesome. Some awesome. bit behind when they leave. But when they leave God behind, too. Yes, sir. <laughs> jail house religion. I'm going through a lot of work to get that Bible. So yeah. my name on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's great. So, wonderful. Yeah, if you stay in the Word, you stay in God's Word, and develop a good prayer life, He'll, he'll help you to walk with Him. And He'll check you when you're going down the wrong road. Yeah. And you need to respond to that. And you, there's something that just doesn't feel right. This is, you know, it's going to take me down the wrong road or company with certain people. Just, just obey the Holy Spirit's lead. Yeah. Get away from that. So, all right. Heavenly Father, we come to you for Eric right now. Lord, you know his life. We pray, God, that you would help him, dear Jesus. That you would help him walk with you. That you would confess him on what you've been doing already, Lord. And we 
pray, God, that you would just bless Eric and help him to walk with you every day, dear God. Put a hedge about him, Lord, oh God. Give him wisdom and direction, dear Lord. Help him to, to, uh, to be where you want him to be if it's in this program, Lord, or, or something else, Lord, that you would lead him and guide him, God. You know, that you can provide for him, and Lord, we'll give you praise for what you do. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name, amen. 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 So nice to meet you. You too, sir.